Live from Prompt, this is Tech Talk Taco Tuesday. This is the show where we talk about dirt bikes and what, Logan? Dirt bike related products. Right. And um, Logan has stalkers now. Not only does he have girlfriends trying to contact him through our YouTube page, he's got stalkers because Troy Hicks has hunted down Logan's cousins someplace. And uh, so that's just how this stuff gets more popular. Um, well, can you race this weekend, yeah? Yeah. How'd it go? Pretty good. Yep. What place does pretty good in title? Uh, first. First place. That's exactly how you want to do it when you're racing. So, uh, yeah, Logan's uh, back. It's it's getting cool enough to ride dirt bikes again, right? Yeah. <laughs> so uh, I had I had one question that popped up someplace, and I didn't uh, remember what I do with my phone. I had my phone a minute ago. I think I I turned I know I turned it off. Did I leave it over there? There was a question on it from somebody in the in the chat uh, room. There's no computer. Oh yeah, you know how to fix that? <laughs> go go over there. I'll I'll keep BS and go over there. Grab the one that you usually edit on. Unplug uh, yeah. everything and then plug it in here and we'll get it running. That that black screen. I did you really forget something. Me <laughs> before this show? I don't think it was Not black a minute ago. No, it was black the whole time. I turned it on, huh? Yeah, neither do I. I was here a minute ago. So um, let's see. Uh, George Justice says, Toby Price keeps hinting something new slash KTM is coming. Anything you could shed light on? Yeah, there's an 890 adventure bike. There was a video released uh, early today. So it's the um, it's basically the new 790, which is now an 890. And um, yeah, there's a video of him, and I believe it's Sam Sutherland out riding it. So you, yeah. Plug that in, and then uh, we figure out what video we put on there. It's just, I think it's the one that's on the, it's the one that's on the screen. You want to come over here and talk, and I'll, I'll fix that? <laughs> That'd be a long shot. Um, Logan hold, holding the holding the, everybody's attention for four minutes while I try to fix that. Uh, and Troy Hicks claims that your cousin hu- cousins hunted him down, because he's famous for coming, uh, commenting on this show. Uh, Charlie Tuna. Uh, real, is that is that your real name? What's that? Oh. Yep. No. No. Charlie Tuna says he has a 2018 KTM 500 EXC. He's coming up on 135 hours. The manual indicates it's time for a water pump service. Do you think this is worth the extra money to go with an aftermarket pump like Boysen with aluminum fins or stick with the plastic OEM pump? I couldn't find anything in the search function on the dirtbiketest.com website. Thanks. Well, that's because we don't have anything uh, in relation to that. I did a, I did a pretty extensive test on that Boysen um, impeller cover. Actually, I did it on a KTM 350 and a Honda 250 just to f- learn what that thing does. And what I've learned in uh, in testing cooling systems and stuff like that is that. Uh, it's part of a system. And if you're going to change one part of the system, you better be ready to change all of the other parts of the system in order to realize any gains. On a KTM 500, I have four or five of them now. I don't know, four, at least four, four and a half, because I haven't paid for one, right, Bob? Um, I've never changed the water pump. I've never serviced the water pump. I've never modified the water pump. I haven't needed to. And I just on one of them, I just did the valves on, and it was it's the first one I bought from you. Um, I, I checked the valves. In other words, how many times did you check the valves? Maybe a couple times. Couple times. Okay, so this is the first time I've checked it since I've owned the bike. The bike has four hundred and nine hours on it, and the valves were perfect. They're right in the middle. They're they're right where they needed to be. Um, so, like. The manual tells you to do that, checking the valves all the time. And the only reason I check the valves is because it has a full summer of riding in silt and dust and dirt and all kinds of stuff like that. So, yeah, hit the, hit the, the what is it, the replay button the, the, in that corner, those three little dots. I think I already yeah. yeah. Repeat. Yeah, good. And then hit the arrow that's, that, well, that makes it go there, big. Man. Hey, you know, if you watch this show enough, you will learn how to do your own podcast and video show just by all of our screw-ups because um, 
Yeah, that's that's how that's how that's how this works. I think you got the wrong show, but I don't care. It's it's it looks better than standing still. Somebody's gonna get some free advertising. Nate at DDC. I need a YZ125 sprocket. That's your cost for tonight. <laughs> I need a sprocket on my 125. Um, so uh, as far as like the water pump being replaced, I've heard people say, well, those plastic fins will wear out. Yeah, if you run sand in it, maybe. Or if you if you try to grab it with pliers. And what's funny is I think they're actually like two pieces. That water pump is actually a two-piece part because I have replaced them on my Husabergs because they make so much power that they wear water pumps out. And your KTM 500 is nowhere near the same category um, as a Husaberg 570. So you you don't have to worry about it. Uh, but, tsh, yeah, the I don't I don't know why the why the Husabergs uh, had to do it. But they, they're, they're, it's like a two-piece thing. And if you take it apart, you might as well plan on getting a new one because they, they come apart and uh, they can break. So is that a good answer? Yeah. So Charlie, is that are you happy with that? Um, I I wouldn't. Um, there's no need to touch it at 135 hours. I would I would I wouldn't touch anything on that bike unless it started doing something funny. And back to why I actually checked the valves was uh, I have a the battery after about well it was the battery that you gave it to me with finally died and or it just didn't have any cranking apps. It was it was it was just just getting tired. So it was kind of hard starting, and I was going to – I just said, well, I'm going to go ride this thing for probably, what, seven, 800 miles in the next week if I ride it a lot, and which I will on Rebel Rally. So I figured I might as well just check it. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> it, was, it takes, what, 10 minutes? And, and then if, it, if, if they didn't pass muster, I was going to move over to the next bike that I had the same sticker on. It said check the valves, and the other one needs to have a Kickstarter – shaft seal put in it and i want to check the clutch dampers and you know the usual stuff so just maintenance just routine maintenance and and now i won't do it for another couple hundred hours probably <laughs> if i don't need to uh actually i want to put top ends in a couple of those because i'm i have a i have a vertex piston in one that now has 140 hours or something in it and i want to kind of take it out to see how that's doing because the stock ones like did your bike ever have a piston put in it nope 400 hours it's smoking a little bit though. It does a little bit of smoke, and but my experience is that smoke comes from the the valve guide seals. So uh, after that much time, yeah, possibly. So why do KTM 500s on the internet make 75 rear wheel horsepower and go in 150 miles an hour, but KTM factory rally bikes do not? Um, because everybody on the internet lies, <laughs> except for me. Uh, well. My KTM 500 goes 103, like so. That's what that's what it does. I think you got to run a dual sport tire to make them go that fast. <laughs> so the KTM factory guys, they don't have. They run those factory race Michelins, and that makes the bikes go slow, right? Um, yeah. So Charlie Tuna, he says, "Thank you, sir. No cooling issues, so I'm leaving the water pump alone." That is smart, smart, uh, smart guy right there. Unless you just just go, I guarantee you, you can go search somebody and they'll have a better setup than what I just told you. Um, JB Black, this is uh, this is the guy who made the logo that I used on the Facebook post, and I I I, I haven't read this. I just saw the message come up, so I'm going to go ahead and read it. And this is taking a he made that logo too. He makes a lot of logos. If you need a logo, um, search out JB Black. Um, that's B L A K K. And uh, on the Facebooks, and he can he can design a logo for you. Uh, he's very very reasonably priced. And then uh, if you tell him you don't like it, he'll probably just um, curse you, like like really make a curse or make a video about you or something like that. <laughs> Anyways, my lifelong mantra explained in one paragraph says Jerry, <laughs> please stop saying you can't joke about anything anymore. You can you can joke about whatever the f you like. And some people won't like it, and they will tell you they don't like it. Then it's up to you to whether you give a F or not. And then it's on, and it's a good system. <laughs> so he, I guess he quoted that from a, a Ricky Gervais. You know who that is? Anybody? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Comedian. This is a comedian. Yeah. So, yeah, thanks, Jerry. Uh, thanks for – actually, thanks for all the logos. I gave some of those stickers away. 
Anybody want to know what the 2021 climb gear looks like? I can't show you or tell you, <laughs> but uh, I know because I wore it the other day. Um, as, but we, when we were riding, I gave it to the people we were riding with uh, because that's the thing. If you go riding with me in Nevada, I give you one of those stickers. So, um, and you can't buy them because they're priceless. So what, what else is new, Logan? What, 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 about, what about our sponsors? Should we talk about our sponsors? It's that company right there. Yeah, KTM. Yeah, you have to read it. Just do it, all, just, just do it without reading it. It's, they're based in uh, Marietta in the United States and Madaghofen in Austria. Yeah. What, um, what do they make? The world's leading high performance street and off road motorcycle man. No. Yeah, they're yeah yeah. They, yeah. they make the world's leading street and high even a KTM eight ninety that you can scour the internet and see videos of uh, Toby Price riding it. Um, what else are they have a ready to race mentality? Right, it says ready to race on most of the bikes. Yeah, yeah, even that KTM three ninety. I let someone borrow that the other day, and she took it and rode it 350 miles all around Death Valley and came back and said the thing was awesome. So she spent – it was one of the girls that was with the climb <coughs> – excuse me, the climb guys. And uh, she had ridden a BMW 310, GS310 all over Europe. <laughs> okay, Logan, take over. Keep reading the KTM ad. Oh, KTM ad. <coughs> um. COVID. Ready to race. Uh, what, are the, what are the points? Ready to race. Uh, they're in Madhofen, high performance, and the, it's um, every product they build. Every what, product they develop and every move they make. Oh. What, wait, what about those yeah, ones? Yeah. Um, <laughs> oh, all, is shown in every. Right. Yeah. Pretty good. Um, yeah, so Mark, a KTM 890 Adventure, so that means uh, your your bike just lost eh, probably 92% of its value, and if you want to come over, I'll, I'll do uh, an assessment and buy it in cash. So it's it's troubling, you know, having such a, just a little 790 when now there's an 890 available. I, I, I know the feeling. You could, you could always step down to a 3, actually, I'll trade you straight across for a 390 for that 790, because the 390 is still new, 790 old, old hat. Uh, and no, I don't know when they're going to be around, but I've been told kind of, uh, later, definitely later on in the year. Um, I, I don't know if they told me like it was, it was December or March, but I had asked about it. So, uh, okay. And yeah, what's our first question? Oh yeah. What is our first question? In Austria, in no Arabic, Arab, in Arabic it says, does it double? Does it double? I'm thinking the Sierra 450. No, I think that video was posted on uh, the KTM 390. Yeah. I don't remember, but I think that's... Does it double? Does it double? The 390, probably not. <laughs> it might be... So there might be some translation. Like, is it a twin? Like, because that's when the, the there's a lot of stuff's lost in translation. So, um, yeah. Uh, we're, we got our Arabic fan club going. Lucky they're not... Um, trying to arrange a marriage for you. <laughs> um, oh, so Mark Daniels has a, an old 990. Yeah, that thing's really old. You're not ever going to be able to sell that. In fact, if you want to buy a 990, <laughs> Mark will probably be selling his. But I also know, I know someone who's selling a really cherry um, KTM 990 Baja. So that was like the good year. Of those, it was the best one because it was the last one they made, and it has no ABS stuff on it, and it, it's it's a uh, it's a really they they had the fuel injection all sorted out by then. It was a good bike, so just send us an email. I can put you in touch with somebody. Victor says, "What is the best entry level rally road book holder? Is there any sharing sites for GPX files or road books? If there is one, do you recommend Rally Navigator?" So. Um, Victor, so the best entry level rally roadbook is, and I kid you not, I I've seen this a couple times. You take a Tupperware box, and you you punch holes in it, and you put like basically pins or sticks through it, and then that's your rally roadbook holder. That's full bottom of the barrel, cheap. Um, like you probably see them a lot more down in Mexico than you do up here, 
but you know you'll you'll see them down there. I'm surprised you haven't seen that before. And some guys will like put knobs on the side and make them so they work, and they'll actually use O rings inside of it so that when you spin one, it spins the other. Uh, different things like that. So that's the the bottom barrel, and then a Cherbys used to make a really nice plastic one. I don't know if they still do. Uh, and then then you start getting into the mechanical ones, and then they start getting expensive. You're talking three, four, five hundred dollars. Uh, on something that you're going to put up on your handlebars, and if you crash, you're going to bend it and need to buy spare parts. So uh, there was a there was also a company in Colombia that that made some pretty good ones. Uh, remember the kid came and trained here, yeah, and it, I yeah, he owned the he owned the company, and I wish I could remember the name of it, but they were hard to get up here. But um, I know some guys that got them, and they're pretty. I have a couple of them, and they were they were pretty bulletproof as far as those things went. So, and then is, uh, is Rally Navigator, so Rally Navigator has some free options. So on, on that thing, that's entry level. But as you start accessing features, uh, it costs you more on how you're able to use it. So it's kind of a, a tiered system. Uh, there are some free versions of software out there. There's, um, there's a, one called Tulip that we use quite a bit uh, that's ridiculously hard to get a hold of. Um, it's kind of shareware and it, it needs some development. It, it has a lot of quirks to it and we're trying to work on that. But Rally Navigator, the cool thing about that is Mike Shirley, who's been on the show, is the owner of that and the developer, or not the developer, he's the brain behind it. They actually stay really current with the Dakar regulations and with um, if you're into TSDs or FIA road rallies, they have all the right lexicons and they auto highlight colors and all the stuff that you would need to do. So I, I would say if you're gonna if you're really gonna get into it, I would uh, I would jump on the Rally Navigator uh, bandwagon. Easiest thing to do, best thing to do, most current. There's the most support for it. Um, all that kind of all that kind of stuff. And uh, Dennis is alive in the Great North. It's probably dark there almost all day now, isn't it? White covered in white. Okay. It's like North Canada. <laughs> Uh, he'll be down here. Den Dennis will be down here. Uh, Troy Hicks says, 990s are good until you have to do a six-hour oil change. They're not that bad. I, I, I do mine in like an hour. It's not too bad. I don't, I don't really recall it being that difficult. Depends on what skid plate. You have one of those kids skid plates that has 22 fasteners on it, then it's difficult. Um, let's see. Let's see. We carry a parrot in our shoulder in Mexico. That's how Victor says he navigates. <laughs> <laughs> and and you wonder why he gets kicked off Facebook. That's and he's being nice to us. <laughs> hey, he actually sent me a picture of a bear claw bathtub. Do you want one of those? Yeah. Okay, Victor. Yeah, Heather says we want it. She'll come and pick it up in about a week or two. <laughs> and George is isn't the roadbook stuff going electronic as in an iPad? Yes, and. Um, even with Rally Navigator, they have their own built-in. You can turn your iPad into a roadbook reader, um, and we we run them. Basically, that the, we have a another program called Rally RB Nav Pro, which is by Rally Blitz. That's a roadbook holder. That's an all-in-one unit. It you you load the PDF file of your roadbook, so just like you would print it on your printer, you load it into your iPad, and then there's um, companies that make uh, buttons. Uh, uh, my buddies over in Utah make these buttons. They're electronic buttons that connect through Bluetooth, and so you you don't need the roadbook holder. You just need to risk your iPad out in the front of your handlebars, <laughs> and uh, and then it does everything. It's the odometer. It's the compass. You know, it does all the stuff that you need uh, if you're if you're into that. Um, uh, and Rusty Nail says. Uh, ride with a dude that navigates. That's how he would do that. Oh, Bob has a question. Well, he should have a little bell like like uh, like Jimmy does, and then he just taps on it, and I can pay attention. But I'm going to ignore him because we're trying to blast through these questions. I'm sure it's I'm sure it's super pertinent to the subject, but I, I've learned with Bob that I can do one of two things: I can ignore him, and then and then he'll forget, you know, and, or I can turn the camera around and he will run away. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I'm going to get another camera. Will the iPad survive the vibration? It has so far. My two iPads have survived the vibrations, but I mount them on. Uh, well, I have two different systems that are mounted on different things, but um, yeah, I haven't had a problem yet. So, okay, Logan, what's our second question? Uh, Greg Christie. 
probably the best professional, useful, and information review in this bike I've seen on YouTube. Thanks. Wow. Thanks, Greg. That's that's uh, that's what we like to hear, and I'm just patting myself on the back. So next question. Um, from nine. This show would be so much better if there wasn't a bore loading the group. I would have loved to hear what other people had to say. I feel bad that for the guy in the middle, especially, was he there just because, just to be ignored? <laughs> no, that guy just doesn't talk. So he's talking about me. I was the guy. I was the, what was it? A bore. I was the bore leading the group, and he would have loved to hear what other people would say. And I think the guy in the middle, that was especially— Just doesn't talk. That was you. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm going to turn—I I'm prefer nine. I'm going to turn—right now, I'm going to turn the show over to Logan and stop talking. Uh, Drew K. <laughs> Where are those individu <laughs> individuals riding? Wasn't it easier to do this show when I was drinking? No. <laughs> uh, back to nine. It just let's just roll. Let's roll back to nine's question there. So I, I checked nine's. Uh, I checked nine's uh, videos that he put up because I wanted to see how he did it. You guess what? Is it just him? Oh, he doesn't have any. Oh. <laughs> no, he doesn't have any. I like to. I like to. I like to be led by example. So he had. He had a lot of. He had a lot of like. Um, you know, male bodybuilding videos and. And some things on how to cook chicken and, you know, uh, how to, he was, he was kind of looked like he was into adventure bikes and telling you how to eat and telling you how to work out. That's what I think. But hey, Nine, thanks for the comment. I'm going to shut up again and let Logan uh, read the next question. Uh, Drew K, where are those individuals riding? So Drew K watched one of our videos. And since I try to make this the most helpful, informative show with just no nonsense uh, replies to questions, I'm going to tell you, Drew, I'm not going to tell you because that's my thing. It's that you watch that video and you saw some of the awesome places that we ride. And you know how I found them? <laughs> I went riding a lot of places. Some of them weren't so awesome. And to get to those places and to find them. And then the thing is, if I told you I've just revealed that location and then everybody's going to flock and want to go there and try to ride in those spots. So my personal way of doing things is no locations. Enjoy the ride and go find the locations yourself. Um, you know, and, and if you're the guy that goes and like sees the spot and knows where it's at. Oh, I, I know where that's at. I mean – doesn't take rocket scientists to kind of figure some stuff out. You know where we're located. You can do the math and do different things. And and you know somebody who knows somebody who thinks they know somebody who knows where I ride. And then and they're like, oh, I'm uh, we're gonna go riding on some Jimmy Lewis trails. It's like, uh, you know, it it, it it's did you earn <laughs> did you earn your your I don't want to say your right to be there because you have a right to be there, but did you? Did you put the work or the effort in to get there? Because if you didn't have to put some effort into finding really good places to ride, you're not going to respect them. And then you're going to tell your other buddies who don't put the effort into finding places to ride. And it's it's it becomes problematic. It's Right now, it's with all the GPS and all the, the sh sharing of stuff. Like even Victor was asking, is there a place to where you share um, rally routes and stuff? And like me, not really because – I know how much time it takes to build a map book and either you're, you're a paying client and you're coming to my school to learn how to do that. Or you're a, you know, you're a professional rally racer. That's also working on training to get better. And we all share routes. So if I make one, then, you know, Ricky and, and Andrew and Mason, all get to ride it, but only if they bring one back to the group. So I get to, if I make one, I'll get to ride five or six other rallies. And there's these events that we go to that are like, Fight clubs, you know, no, they're not even a fence, actually. They're just places where we know where we can go and go riding other routes. But, man, you don't just get invited to those things. You kind of have to earn your, your thing. So there's some things that, no, I won't tell you. And, and I think if we all kind of took that a little more serious about, like, kind of respecting. If, if you just want to go ride someplace that, that you know, go, go to the areas that are – that are well used and, and you, you know, you, it's the secret places are secret for a reason. They're hard to find, but if you want to go try to do something different, go to a race, you know, go ride a race. Cause that's a place where there's a bunch of other people that 
want to go do something and you can go ride a marked course and you have to pay for it. <laughs> you know, so, uh, anyways, yeah. So Drew, sorry about, I can't answer your question. I'm not good enough. <laughs> Next. Joe Doyle. Um, Jimmy, you are the man. I always change your tires this way, change my tires this way. Apart from using my aluminum spokes, I figure it's good practice for flats on the, in the field yet to try a moose though so i'm not the man that's roger de coster uh he's talking about my my uh, moose changing uh videos this is joe doyle and yeah he has he apart from using my aluminum spoon so i use i have aluminum ones and i have metal ones and all different kinds of spoons but um yeah um if you if you want to know how to change a tire you can watch that video and i'll show you one way of doing it Although it doesn't work for everybody. <laughs> um, SF, SF. I got my 2021 XCW 300. Ridiculous power. Best bike ever. What kind of bike is that? 2021 XCW 300. What kind of bike is that? Oh, KTM. Right. Yeah, you're supposed to say that. Sponsor the show, you know. Do you think it's the best bike ever? The KTM part yeah. or the actual... That bike. one. He thinks it's a ridiculous bike. Best ever. What do you think? Haven't ridden it yet. <laughs> That's a good answer. Is it better than your 125? Don't know. <laughs> what do you think? It's not as good as a KTM 500. I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> That's the best bike ever. And then there's one other bike that could cause a bell to ring. <laughs> yeah. what, what, what would that be, Logan? The Husenberg 570. Right. <laughs> Most power ever harnessed inside of a motorcycle that I'm willing to talk about. Um, okay, let's see. Now, Troy Hicks claims he's living in Pahrump, and he's, uh, let's see, living in Pahrump, having good trails to ride is a must. There is nothing else. Unless you like tweaking. you got yeah. math. <laughs> what? Nice. Oh, there's places to eat? Yeah, we have places to eat. I think there's some good places to eat. Um. They have a golf course. And yeah. A golf course, a racetrack. And a gun, and a gun club. club. Yeah, and you can go to Walmart with your gun. And yeah. Yeah, that, that can be a hobby too. So there's lots of stuff to do in Pahrump. Actually, if you're an idiot, you can ride wheelies up and down the street on your dirt bike too. Because there's guys that do that shit all day long. Good grief. I tried to I tried to flag the dude down the other day. I was out, I was out, I was actually getting the mail and he was like doing runs back and forth. And I just like I just kinda wanted to go. Dude, go someplace else. Yeah. Like, like, don't do it because you're going to get splattered like the other guys did on the street. Or, you know, I don't want to hear it. I mean, in big loud muffler. And it's just a different – it's a different crowd. And unfortunately, there's a lot of people that don't want to hear it. And generally, those people don't like dirt bikes to begin with. They don't even know. They, they don't know that they do or don't like dirt bikes. They just don't like things that make that kind of noise. And so when I'm out there and I'm riding a – box stock ktm it's super quiet and i go putting down the road they give me stink eye because i'm just like that ding dong that's riding you know doing wheelie boys up and down the street so um yeah <laughs> don't do wheelie boys uh let's see uh cody sadler says jimmy for district 37 desert racing hare and hound scrambles what new bike would you choose KTM 500. <laughs> uh, so District 37, Hair Scrambles, Hair and Hounds, what new bike would I choose? Man, for, for desert racing, there's there's kind of like a lot of options. Um, uh, and and it, it's funny because you got to talk to you got to talk to someone who's racing a lot more. He, like so Trevor was in here and we were talking the difference between motocross bikes and like the off-road bikes. I would always favor a bike with a wide ratio transmission. That was just something that I liked. A lot of people don't like it because I think they don't know how to shift. <laughs> so I'll wait to shift till my motor's revving enough and then I shift. Where guys that like don't like doing that, they like a close ratio box so they don't have to think about it too much. So th then you're kind of splitting the line between like the XC style bikes and the, and the motocross bikes. And the thing about the motocross bikes is the suspension comes stiffer. So in the desert stuff, it works, especially with the size of the hoop you use, you guys have to pound through now. It kind of works a little bit better, just stock stock where 
the XC type of bikes are a little bit soft. Um, so I, I, I don't think it, it, it's a hard question. There's, I mean, the like, okay. So, so let's just take Honda for instance, because the show is not sponsored by Honda, but I'll just talk about Honda. So there you have, you have three choices. You have the CR 450 R, you have the CR 450 RX and you have the CR 450 X. I would pick the X and turn it into a desert bike because it has the gearbox for it. I mean, and and uh, the power delivery is, I think, better for that kind of stuff because, and I bet you it goes top speed. Well, I know it goes top speed. It almost goes 100 miles an hour stock. I have a video someplace that I had a stock one with the stock muffler. And if 100 miles an hour isn't fast enough for you in District 37, um, you shouldn't be racing District 37. You should be getting paid to tell people how to like go faster, I think. Uh, but out of those three bikes, I think it's three different kinds. It's, it's, you could pick the wrong one for you. You know, maybe, you know, maybe if you, if you are like me and you can appreciate kind of more comfort in the bike and, and a bike that's able to go fast, even though it doesn't make a ton of noise and you could do some small modifications to it and make it really good. Cause it, to me, the X is a little more stable than the RX and I kind of like the handling. It feels like it's a little more longer wheelbase, just better. But there's tons of guys that would rather do the R thing, you know, ray, you know, have that have that kind of stiff, um, stiffer chassis and all that kind of thing. So, yeah, uh, I don't know what the answer is. <laughs> um, answer is answer is no matter what, you can always you can always modify it to make it into what you want. You know, you could, there's so much available aftermarket. And almost all the bikes you have to get a bigger tank, and then. Yeah, it seems like everybody just has to have suspension work. They rarely do things like set their sag and 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 do things. But there's there's a lot of stuff. Okay, where are we at now? Uh, Pegard twenty six, great show. I've always been curious, and I've hoped you have insight about progressive springs on linkage shock systems. I have been thinking of trying a KTM PDS spring correct for my weight to increase my ability to carry a bit more camping gear and to reduce the chance of bottoming out when off-road. Is using a progressive spring a bad idea on linkage systems? The bike is a CRF250 Rally Terrain, Northwestern Nevada. Thanks for your help, Paul. So, boy, um, Huh. We had this talk the other day about straight rate versus progressive. Um, it's a personal preference. And so what I've always found, I like progressive springs, um, kind of always have. And even when I didn't really know the difference, I just, anytime there was a pro pro progressive spring on a bike, uh, I liked it more, especially on the KTM uh, PDS stuff, which is just... Um, they because KTM has over the years has gone back and forth between straight rate and progressive springs. And I think they're back on progressive springs now. So, but on a bike like that, the CRF 250R Rally, I would say, oh boy, it's a heavy bike. <laughs> it's heavier. So progressive springs don't necessarily like heavier bikes because you lose the that like the, the shock moves too much in the beginning. It depends on how it's progressive too. I mean, like, like what where it starts and where it ends. So, um, and there's very few people that are going to, you know, specifically wind a really kind of strange spring that fits just one bike. It's kind of, um, uh, it's. I think it's. I think the progressive spring is more of a question mark on. You know where, it, like I said, where the rate starts and where it goes. So if you're starting, if you're starting close to stock, and on that bike you'd want to make sure that where the 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 the, the spring rate starts is close to where the stock spring is because it's pretty soft overall, and then it ramps up from there. I think you'd be in good shape. You know, it goes it goes. But if you're if you have to get like a three or four rate stiffer spring just to, you know, a straight rate spring just to get start the initial the spring the the shock's not going to want to move. So it's that finding that balance of where, where does it start and then what does it ramp up to? And then 
are you going to need to compensate with some valving? Because not only is the spring going to do more work at the end of the stroke, or maybe your valving doesn't have to, on the converse, on the rebound side, when the, when the, when the, that spring is pushing that shock, extending that shock back out, if your rebound, rebound damping isn't strong enough, that bike can become very springy and <clears throat> not like not stick to the ground. So it like it rebounds too quick. So that's the, uh, and that's anytime you go to a stiffer spring, uh, the biggest thing you have to worry about typically is the rebound damping, the rebound side of the damping. So something to think about. So hopefully, uh, Pigar, he's a, he's a regular. He's, yeah, he's a, he's a, he's a, probably a top fan someplace on the, <laughs> on the site. I'm not really sure. So, okay. Is that it? Oh, uh, yeah. Let's not read the first part of that guy's question. Just go straight to that second paragraph in that because he, he, okay. he, he, I think he uh, explains his bike a lot. Zep, they're f FD. I got two of these today. No test ride. Oh, he's so he's talking about riding a KTM 390. And so somehow, I, I didn't understand that part about no test ride, but I, I don't know if he bought two of them or bought two, bought two of without them. riding them. Okay. Uh, one of them had a really bad sound coming from the forks, real bad squeaking and spring noise, like when you shoot a AR-15. Okay, so I'm going to have to stop stop you there. Um, what does it sound like when you shoot an AR-15 other than a than a gun going off? <laughs> yeah, bang. So so is it like uh, so is it like is it like like an AR-15 go off like once, like bang, just once? Or is it like you got a clip in there, it's bang, 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 bang. <laughs> you know? Because I started thinking about this, and I'm like, hey, that bike has a low fender, and I'm wondering if rock is getting sucked up in the fender and and making that clack, 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 when they, you know, the rock rolls. You've ever had that happen in some of the adventure bikes? The yeah. trials bike does that too, when a rock picks up on the knobby and then goes underneath. But okay, so keep going. So I'm, I'm starting to think that maybe it's um, maybe just a single shot, bang. He's talking about the fork. Other than that, really liked it. Not too small like I was expecting. Second paragraph. Okay, that's it. So uh, so only one of them does it, which is uh, is strange. So that means there's something wrong with one or right with the other or who knows. Uh, so when forks, if it's just a, a bottoming out... Um, I always want to know what the oil level is, you know, is the oil level proper and, and set up. And then the other thing is to make sure that the clickers are kind of set the same on, if you have the opportunity to, I mean, the fact that you have the opportunity to go back to back with two bikes makes this kind of testing actually really easy. Um, you know, check the one that works good and then make sure the other one is the same. Uh, I haven't heard of any problems. Our, our bike, uh, we had a leaky fork seal was the only thing we had on, on ours. And when I put it back together, I increased the oil volume in the fork just by, I don't know, it was, it was, it was a small amount to raise it up about five or 10 millimeters inside the fork. And it really helped the bottoming resistance. So that bottoming, it got better. And knowing that inside of that fork is kind of the same stuff that's in it in the EXC. It's kind of, you know, it's the same WP type parts it, it works sort of the same so yeah um, hopefully that thing um boing sound <laughs> and jb black says something is missing maybe like a <laughs> maybe like an ar-15 with a big spring in the butt spring sound <laughs> the uh, form is trying to trying to figure it out um so yeah, it must be slow or mirrors because Janie's checking in, my bartender, who's ineffective to me because I am not drinking beer right now, but that's okay. I'll be back, just just detoxing for a little while. Any other ones, Logan? Ventenio Ped Perovit. Right, try that one more time. Just spit that out. Venetoni Pedrov. Let me Perov. try. Let me try that. Vin. Vinny, Vin, Vininio, Vininio Petrov says, um, say it in his accent. <laughs> <laughs> you don't like the 
Like, hey, hey, look, and you watch those Russian spy movies and stuff, right? You know the bad guy? They always have that gnarly accent. Uh, uh, don't really watch those. But. Uh. <laughs> well, I, I'm still waiting for my, my hype guy to come back. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> so, okay, what does he want to know? Uh, I don't like some things like standing position, but watching the way it flies on gravel and sand is really amazing. Great review. So he's talking about the KTM 390 again. We had a lot of comments on that KTM 390. It kind of went through the it went through the ringer again. Um, but uh, yeah, did he say he didn't like the standing position, or he doesn't like standing I don't when he's riding? I think he likes it. Let's see. You don't like some things like the standing position, but watching the way it flies on gravel and sand is just amazing. Well, that's because I was in the standing position. <laughs> well, it helps. Try doing that in the sitting position, and it's uh, it gets a little bit more scary. But um, yeah, I still don't like the standing position. I still haven't got foot pegs for that thing. The 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 Facebook foot peg guy never got back to me, so that's why I don't really go to Facebook for um, too much. I mean, like, why would you even be on Facebook trying to get motorcycle advice? Oh, wait. <laughs> Sorry, everybody. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> Somebody get that foot. The, so a really nice viewer actually came and told me about the guy, and I sent him and said, hey, I'd like to see about getting some foot fakes for this thing, and maybe he just doesn't feel like it's a market. But I have it on good authority that there's a really good, reputable company, maybe Rottweiler, that's going to be making some um, KTM foot pegs in the very near future because they noticed the same thing as I did, and they have – Brand new big giant CNC machines that can just rip that stuff out. <laughs> so, yeah, that'll be really cool. Hey, uh, George mentions is to our other friend that wanted to know where to go ride. He says the other option, if you don't have time to find a route, is to pay someone to take you on a ride, like Johnny Campbell Tours. Uh, that's run out of here through our our school business. I forgot that. I should have just told him. I said maybe you can even ride in some of those very same routes. <laughs> With 11-time Baja champion Johnny Campbell, but I never, I don't really plug our school. You know, some people thought we closed down after last week when we were joking about, like, you know, where's, the, like, what school? We do, we were just, we are being pretty, I don't know what we were doing. We were joking around. Um, so. Yeah, we were kind of just dodging the fact that there was a Jimmy Lewis off-road school. Yeah. Where would you find that at? On the webs? Yeah. Where? JimmyLewisOffRoad.com. Right. Yep. It's you can check it out. Actually, we we have some opening. We have two classes that are listed on the calendar right now, and we do have some openings, or at least in one of the classes in the November class for sure. We have. I haven't checked because uh, I know I sent out some stuff to yesterday. I sent it out, and some people got back, and I haven't done the uh, done the the spreadsheet. I'm horrible at spreadsheets. I'm almost as good at spreadsheets as I'm as making sure the show runs smoothly, like the plugs and <laughs> wires and stuff like that. So uh, you know how good I am at this show, Logan? I forgot to turn that thing on. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> I hope that thing works good. Yeah. Yeah. Good old Nevo. <laughs> Take me away. It's. It looks like it's working okay. It. I see the bars going up and down, so that's pretty good. Uh, okay, guys, any other, any other questions out there in the uh, – in the Facebook world, um, good. George put the, uh, let's see, how, how's the chick slaying going, Logan? It's a, that is a question. Yeah. How'd um, you, did you ever get back to Maria about our international marketing plan? Uh, no. 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 Sure. That's, that's why we're not making them enough money around here. Uh, we will probably take a week off because, you know, Logan's probably got some dates next Tuesday night that he can't really get out of. So... Uh, I have the feeling that next weekend you guys are all going to get a break from this mess. Um, me too. Uh, <laughs> need a, a reset. Um, I'd like to thank, uh, if there's no other questions, uh, uh, thank uh, Climb for sure. Uh, what's the what's the best Climb? Do you wear Climb gear this weekend, Logan? Climb helmet. Climb helmet. Which yeah. one? F3, right? I think so. Yeah. Yes. Does it have the, does it have the fit yep. lock on the chin strap? Fit lock. You're never going to want to put another helmet on after that. Nope. Yeah, because like once you in the beginning, it's a little weird. You know, you oh you, yeah, you're like, how does this work? But then you and just then realize you just, you just kind of just go. And yeah, it, less is more. it's a throw. Yeah, less is more. Yeah, it's literally a throw, and then it, it and it's really easy to get off. But there's only one way to take it off. Mm -hmm. 
I get pissed off every time I wear another helmet that doesn't <laughs> have that. And even when I wear, I have some older climb helmets that I still wear, um, some older adventure ones that don't have the fit lock on it. And I just, I get, I get riddled every time. I'm like, oh my gosh, I have to. And two or three times I've taken off. I've been on like a dual, a dual sport bike or adventure bike, like riding into Vegas. And I take off and I realize that, no, I realized I didn't buckle my helmet because I kind of, I kind of got started to do it. And I just got, I just like, I don't know, like I probably put my gloves on because yeah. it's weird since I've been wearing those helmets so much when I'm just riding, personally riding, because that's what I wear. I'll throw my gloves on before I put my helmet on. And then, because I can do that with the gloves on, and I can't do the little the D rings with the thing. So, uh, yeah, I uh, and 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 the F threes are actually pretty reasonably priced for for really good helmet, uh, super lightweight, especially if you get the uh, the ECE yes. helmet. So, which is F equals MA. And it's always always remember that. Um, how is the poof dirt around the lake lake bed? Well, you got it. It's it's about three months too dry we need we didn't get any thunder showers out here so there's a lot of it yeah lots of lots of silt rusty Neal, what's your take on the big kawasaki announcement coming in november i don't know i think kawasaki got mad because we didn't put our um we didn't put our uh our kx450 test up quick enough i was too busy trying to make that digital magazine that we're still trying to make and too busy so i don't really know, but I did they did they they did not yeah, I'm gonna say they didn't announce any sort of new KLR six fifty replacement thing. And I think that could be that could be what it what it would be. But uh don't know. Uh haven't haven't no inside information on that. Jimmy, a KTM nine fifty adventure low mi- mileage or try and find a nine ninety. Um I hate carburetors. <laughs> so George says the same thing. Yeah, fuel injection. Yeah, straight away. You can get. You don't even. I. I don't even. George. I think. Oh no, he'll be with me next week, so he can't hold, hold court. I say he could. He could take over Tech Talk Taco Tuesday. I mean, I could probably bring that thing and try to do it, but I'm no way too busy. Be too slammed. Too slam. Where are you gonna be? You can I don't be, even know. Do it in the back of the motorhome again. So you could. Oh, do, oh go go that. sneak into the sneak into no, the. I'm just uh, saying you should plug it plug the rebel rally yeah. oh yeah so i'm working on the rebel rally it's uh gonna be live. right live it's a I'm, a I'm the course director of this event and it's an all women's off-road navigation event it's uh it's not a race it's a competition and it's it's essentially uh they are navigating with maps and compasses no digital technology it's all sealed up and they don't get to use it they're going from literally lake tahoe down to san diego but all off-road so um, they literally, they, they camp the whole way. Uh, of course, we do have like a five-star chef or how many stars you can get being a chef, whatever that is, uh, on most of the day. So, so we're well fed, but you still sleep in the dirt. <laughs> and, uh, but um, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's all, you know, it's all Jeeps and, you know, four, four-wheel drives, actually crossover vehicles, stuff like that. So if you're interested in that, you can just check out rebelrally.com and they have live uh, feeds of the whole whole event and pretty interesting um good uh good 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 times and bob has a question oh you should tell him there was a last year that had the rolls royce in it oh yeah last year yeah rolls royce won the uh, crossover class which is for suvs essentially so they have, basically have two classes they have they have um four by four which is kind of four by four whatever you want and then they have something called a crossover class and it's for vehicles that do not have a transfer case so it's that's that's how they kind of define it because that's the sort of the defining thing. Although there's a lot of vehicles that go different ways, but yeah, kind of kind of neat. This year we have there's a Rivian. Have you heard of that thing? It's the all electric truck. Oh. Yeah, yeah. So there's an all electric, all wheel drive truck in in the event this year. So that'll be interesting as well. So uh, that's all I have. Um, but that's where I'll be. That's why I can't be uh, giving you free motorcycle advice. I was uncommon sense motorcycle and un, uncommon sense. Yeah. Yeah. Cause everybody should follow their manual unless you listen to me. And then I tell you, it's like, you don't need to do that much, but, uh, no, I, I, the manuals, the most safe way you can go. So that's, 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 but that's why it's uncommon. Uh, anything else, Logan, did you, did you learn anything at your race this weekend? Um, Yeah. 
No. Navigation. Navigation. <laughs> Navigate. Well, you got lost, didn't you? Yeah. And you still won? Yeah. Did you get lost after you won? No. No. But everybody else got lost? Or are you just so fast that you can get lost and still win? B. B. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, okay. Well, with that, I think we're going to we're gonna do a short show. It could be our possibly, quite possibly, one of our shortest shows ever. Unless, uh, uh, we have any other questions? No. I'm, I'm still trying to get feedback from that guy with the Honda 450 that uh, last week was had a, had hard starting, and I was kind of more under the impression that he was trying to start it in gear, and his clutch was kind of messed up. I never got. I always like to know how people, you know, when we help solve a solve a problem. I usually like to know, um, you know, what their outcome is. And 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 Jared, I I cannot answer any uh, truck or vehicle questions because you should see the stuff I drive. <laughs> It's uh, yeah, thirty sevens with the six inch lift fit without no. There's I'm sure there's a guy. There's got to be a guy that does this and talks about trucks and <laughs> suspension lifts and everything. I mean, there's probably a lot of them, but like good. <laughs> hey, Mark Daniel says it pays to be a winner. Yeah. Yeah. How much you make? Um, discounts. Discounts. You got a lot of coupons. Yeah. Yeah. So your dad can spend money. And then you can say it's cheaper because we got a discount. Yeah. You need to give it to be a factory rider, because then you get then you <laughs> then you get a <laughs> then you get paid. Uh, okay, with that, hey the and the Andalusia. How, what's the, what's the name of the rally? Everybody's over at oh. Ricky and Andrew at Andal, Andalusia rally. I'm not sure the name of it. Yeah, Mason's over there, I believe too. Is Mason riding? Yeah. Mason's riding. Ricky finished. Yep. 11th I think day. Andrew got sixth. Uh, yeah, yeah, Ricky was. Twelve seconds off the leader, and he finished twelfth. Yeah, that's how. That's how it was only. It was only. It was a. It was a prologue. Eleven, eleventh starting position tomorrow in the prologue. Yeah. So, but it's going to be. It's not a. It's for, not a real rally. Ricky, or, um, Andrew. Andrew I mean. Sixth. Yeah. yeah that's awesome. Brand new bike. Brand new team. Yeah. So yeah, you can follow that on the uh, on the internets too. Um, I just follow their stories on Facebook, and then and then you can then you can figure out with Ricky, you figure out what Nacho's eating yeah. and how Nacho feels all the time, <laughs> and then uh, and Andrew seems like he's just out playing golf. So factory riders, Logan, you, you get to that level, and you just get on your bike and pin it, and then it's just life of luxury after there's hardly yeah. anything else. And chicks too, by the way, lots of chicks. Yeah. <laughs> so okay, uh, wait. Uh, I think that's it. No, no other questions. Uh, somebody's start talking about bump stops. What are bump stops? Do we we have them on motorcycles? Bump stops. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. There's there's a thing on the shock shaft that does that. Uh, okay, everybody, thanks for joining in. Uh, we'll see you in about two weeks. And uh, Logan, say your thing. Uh, KTM or yeah, your KTM thing. Oh, recluse. I'll say recluse. You you get your KTM thing ready. I'll talk about um, recluse. They make. Uh, if you haven't heard us talk about them, we didn't get a recluse question in the show, which is pretty strange. Uh, they make awesome auto clutches that I use on my bike because it makes me a whole skill level better than I actually am. And people say that uh, the only people that complain about them are usually the guys that don't use them or they don't have them. And when I ride past them, they always, you know, they're usually tipped over, or they've slipped off of a hill, or they're stalled on the side of a hill or something's wrong and I ride past them and they say the only reason you do that is because you have a recluse and I usually take my hand off the handlebars that's this one and I give them a thumbs up like that as I ride right by them yeah because I don't have to use the clutch okay Logan how's KTM doing um they're based out of Mattinghofen Austria and North American headquarters in Marietta California KTM has set the standards for motorcycle manufacturing and development KTM has provided a ready-to-race mentality in every product it develops and every move it makes, and has been a fierce competitor on the racetracks around the world. Okay, with that, we're going to say we will see you out on the trail. Cheers. <laughs>